So now we are looking at the drugs that are used in rheumatoid arthritis. Now what is rheumatoid arthritis? It is basically a chronic multi-system inflammatory autoimmune disease with no known cause. It is mainly common in women with childbearing age. There are many manifestations of the, this autoimmune disease, but the main manifestation is rheumatoid arthritis, where there is persistent inflammatory sinusite, sinovitis of peripheral smaller joints. This leads to immobility and pain and inflammation, of course. Now, what causes this? As we know, it is autoimmune disease so an autoantibody which is basically an IgM antibody is produced against the FC portion of the IgG antibody all of this it leads to a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction where this complex of IgM and IgG it lodges in different places like glomeruli, soft tissues, joints, etc. leading to the multi-system inflammatory manifestations. Now to treat rheumatoid arthritis, we basically need to focus on two things. There are two aspects to this, to this disease if we look, look at them closely. One is the pain and inflammation that the disease causes. And this is what, what the patient complains about most. It is due to the prostaglandins and leukotrienes and all the stuff that are involved in pain. And the other is the autoimmune reaction and the further damage that is occurring to the organs due to the autoimmune reaction. To combat the pain, we know we need to use NSAIDs. NSAIDs also have anti-inflammatory actions, but they are not really used as any anti uh, as anti-inflammatory because high doses are required, and at high doses, NSAIDs have a vast variety of side effects, including gastritis and bleeding disorders. To combat the immune reaction response of the immune system, which is mediated by the cytokines, for example, TNF, we use DMARDs, that is, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. Now, the two aspects of treatment, we'll discuss in detail that which drugs we use to combat these two aspects. first set of drugs are used to combat the pain and inflammation as stated before and the second class of the drugs the DMARDs disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs are to decrease the autoimmune response and prevent further tissue damage by suppressing the immune system To control pain and inflammation, we mainly use NSAIDs and glucocorticoids, of course. The DMARDs further are classified as non-biologic and biologic. But non-biologic are not derived from biological sources and biological source, uh, biologic are derived from biological sources. That is obvious. Let's see what NSAIDs do for rheumatoid arthritis. They are used for rapid symptomatic relief by decreasing inflammation and pain. They decrease the stiffness and swelling in the joints. They do not have any effect on the progression of the disease. Now the glucocorticoids act mainly as uh, suppressants of the immune response and also as anti-inflammatory 
by decreasing leukocyte migration, increasing lysosome stability, decreasing capillary permeability, decreasing inflammation, and decreasing the release of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Expression of COX-2 is inhibited, which is mediated, uh, which is a me uh, which is needed in inflammation. Intra interleukins are also decreased. Their main side effects uh, are not to be discussed here, but they are very. They have a very wide range of side effects, such as candid candidiasis or thrush. Let's discuss the non-biologic DMARDs first. The first drug to discuss is methotrexate. Now what methotrexate does is that it is cytotoxic to the lymphocytes by being a DHF that is dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor and folate antagonist. It inhibits the bone marrow, the lymphocytes and thus decreasing the amounts of antibodies produced. The side effects are too much. It is hepatotoxic. Uh, hematotoxic because the blood cells are dividing. It is hepatotoxic so the blood levels need to be monitored and so the liver function need to be monitored as well. It causes mucosal ulcers. It is contraindicated in pregnancy, in liver disease and in peptic ulcer. The side effects can be minimized by administration of folic acid. Next is hydrochloroquine or chloroquine. What it does it is that it stabilizes the lysosomes, decreases chemotaxis, and scavenge the free radicals. They are mainly used in mild disease. The side effects include GI distress, visual pathology such as corneal or retinal opacity is there, so a visit to an ophthalmologist once a year is recommended. Synchronism is seen, of course. Hemolysis is also seen in G6PD deficient patients like aspirin. Next drug is sulfasalazine. It acts. Firstly, it is acted upon by clonic bacteria which splits into splits it into two active compounds. One is sulfapyridine and the other is 5-ASA that is aspirin like acetyl salicylic acid. So sulfapyridine, what it does is that it inhibits B-cell function and production of inflammatory cytokines such as interleukins, TNF, by monocytes is decreased and aspirin, as we know, inhibit COX and have local anti-inflammatory action in ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, etc. The side effects include hemolysis, leukopenia, etc. The next drug is liflunomide. How it acts is that it inhibits dihydroorotate dehydrogenase, thus decreasing the level of UMP and thus decreased ribonucleotides formation. It basically arrests the lymphocytes at the G1 phase of the cell cycle and thus immunoglobulins that is the autoantibodies are not produced. The side effects are like the anti-cancer drugs like same as the previous ones, alopecia, rash, diarrhea, and it is also hepatotoxic. The next drugs are gold compounds, all the drugs with oro in it, A-U-R-O. For example, orothiomelate. Now what gold does is that it alters the morphology and function of macrophages which are involved in the cell mediated immunity thus decreases the immune response. 
Side effects include hypersensitivity like actions, itching, stomatitis, also ulcers, protein ureas, and rarely aplastic anemias can be seen. The next drug is D-Pencilamide. It is basically a penicillin metabolite and it acts by suppressing T cell and it also suppresses the R factor that is responsible for this disease and the side effect includes proteinuria. Let's see the biologic DMARDs now. When the patient does not respond to non-biologic agents we use biologic DMARDs. They have side effects so we reserve we keep keep them as reserve the first is at an recept it is a basically a recombinant form of the tnf receptor so it basically acts like a sponge to tnf alpha and absorbs the tnf you know tnf is involved in all the immune reactions and it is a mediator so if that is in, uh, inhibited then all the opportuni opportunistic infections like TB can occur. Next is infliximab and adalimumab. It is basically a monoclonal antibody to TNF. So it uh, neutralizes TNF. Side effects are the same. Thirdly, anakendra. It is basically interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. Same side effects. And lastly, abatacept. It is cell T cell activation inhibitor same side effects we can see that all these four drugs have the same side effect of suppressed immunity and thus opportunistic infections are there